So yesterday we had a beautiful reflection on, on the beautiful gospel of the Annunciation. So the Archangel Gabriel appearing to Our Lady. And again, we're used to hearing this gospel, but to, to hear those words as if for the first time through Our Lady's ears, what on earth it must have meant you know, to, to, to be told that by this angelic creature, rejoice so highly favoured, the Lord is with you. She's deeply disturbed by these words because obviously something supernatural is happening. And Gabriel continues, Mary, do not be afraid. You have won God's favor. Listen, you are to conceive and bear a son. You must name him Jesus. He will be great and be called son son of the Most High. And Our Lady asks, well, I I understood or I discerned that that I'm supposed to be a virgin. How can I I be a virgin and and be a mom? I I want to do your will. I just am not sure how, how I'm supposed to do this. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will cover you with its shadow and so the child will be holy. Okay, now if Our Lady understood what that meant, I'm not sure. I kind of have my doubts. Not that it's not a question of intelligence, it's just this has never happened in the history of humanity before. So it's a bit, it's unprecedented. So to, 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 to have a, receive an answer like that and say, okay, well, I guess, okay, I guess, Lord, you know what you're doing. You, you, you know, I don't know what that means, but you do. So may it be done unto me according to what you have said. May it be done unto me. Just what a a, a stunningly beautiful attitude before God. When we experience things that we don't like, don't understand, don't want, but just to be able to say, Lord, I don't get it. I don't really like it, and I definitely don't understand it. Um, But may it be done unto me according to your word. I trust you. I trust you. I trust that what what you will, what you allow, what you give, what you take away, what you leave. I, I, I trust that it's all, it's all for the best. Going back to, to, to Job, no? The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So it's, it's again, it's, it's very easy to read these passages and think, wasn't it great for them? You know, and I'm really glad Our Lady got the right answer. <laughs> but, and not really apply these things to ourselves uh, many centuries later. Our Lady then goes to visit her cousin Elizabeth and she brings this, like, she she, she personifies this this mission. What does she do? In her her very personhood, she's bringing Jesus, right? She's bringing Jesus with her wherever she goes. And so she, she greets Elizabeth and we don't know actually what the greeting was. Chances are it was probably the the fairly typical shalom. So to to wish the, the, the other person peace. So we can imagine Our Lady saying to Elizabeth, Shalom. And then the, this joy fills Elizabeth at seeing her, her cousin, but also seeing her friend, this person she loved. And then this person is actually carrying Jesus as well. So they say that pregnant women have, have a certain glow, which is probably true. Uh, but how about having a certain glow because not only are you carrying a child, but you're carrying God. So there would have been just something so consoling and beautiful about Our Lady's presence. Uh, she was so full of virtues, but, 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 but now in this case, it actually, actually carries God incarnate. It's, just, it's mesmerizing. It's just beautiful, absolutely stunning. So from the moment your greeting reached my ears, the child within my womb leaped for joy. Of all women, you are the most blessed, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Why should I be honored with a visit from the mother of my Lord? It's, it's such an elated... Uh, greeting or response to Our Lady's greeting. So full of joy. So, full, so you, you have this, 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 this it's kind of like um, a much more kind of biblical version of when a lot of our girls here in Holy Family meet in the afternoon and they're all full of coffee and you have all this kind of giggles and stuff going on in, in the corridor. No one really knows what's being said but they seem to have a language that they understand amongst themselves. Everyone else looks on and goes, what are they talking about? No idea. Uh, but I can imagine it's Our Lady and uh, Elizabeth as they meet here, there's just this, 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 this superabundance of joy. You know, it's just such a beautiful scene of, 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 of pure love, of, of mission, of Jesus there in the center, of sanctity, of sobriety in, 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 the, in the, the correct sense of it. Sisters walking with each other in faith. 
I wish, I pray, I hope that that would be our experience as well of inviting Our Lady into our lives, into our prayer. That she brings Jesus, that's the whole point, you see. She, she never brings people to herself. It's the last thing she'd want. But she brings, but it's important that we do recognize her role and her rightful place without being afraid of exaggerating that. Behold, all generations will call me blessed, she says in the Magnificat. All generations will call me blessed. I think many generations are petrified to talk to her at all. So, behold, all generations will call me blessed. To recognize she is the mother of our Lord, as, as Saint Elizabeth says today. So she has a very particular and beautiful place within the church, which isn't in the slightest a threat to the the, 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 the the redemption that we receive only through Christ. But I want to focus today, and just very briefly, on the last line of our gospel today. Blessed is she who believed that the promise made her by the Lord would be fulfilled. Blessed is she who believed that the promise made her by the Lord would be fulfilled. It's a line that's often used in, in women's ministry these days, and, and rightly so. So blessed is she who believes that the promise, whatever promise the Lord made to you personally or to us more generally through Scripture, blessed is she who believes that promise would be fulfilled. And it's interesting, if you, if you do a, a Google search for biblical promises, there are lots of them. There are, there are hundreds of, 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 of different promises. So these are, when I say the biblical ones are, they're directed to the church, maybe they were inv- directed to individuals, but the Lord can also speak very personally through them to you. And what a gift it is to be able to hear those words spoken in scripture and know that they're directed also at me. And this is a divine word, this is a divine promise, this is God speaking. And to, to hold on to that confidence, Lord, you have said it, your word is true, this will happen. Now, we have to be careful here not to slip into a prosperity gospel either, uh, in thinking that uh, the Lord will, will, will bless us with you know, crops and that sort of idea, that basically the Lord is going to give us a lot of money. He might, but only if it's good for your soul only if it's good for your soul. Uh, that's not really what we're talking about here. We're talking about the, the deeper things, though, because at the end of the day, the, I was just uh, watching... I, when I was a kid, I used to love Star Trek, The Next Generation, right? I used, I used to find it absolutely fascinating for my imagination, right? Like visiting new galaxies and new worlds and new planets and new species and new... all Like, it's just fascinating stuff for the imagination, right? I, I, I absolutely loved it. But I remember thinking not so long ago, because it's now the, the, they've kind of reinvented the, the Star Trek series with a series called Picard. Don't, I won't go into it. Uh, but I remember thinking, like, if we were to pray about this, you know, does the Lord want us to go to further galaxies or whatever? And I just thought, I don't think the Lord cares even minimally about space exploration. I mean, I think like, he's happy enough that we gaze, gaze at the stars and have all those kind of things. But I don't think he actually cares if we travel outside our solar system. I don't think he cares at all. It makes no difference to him. Because the only thing, the only thing that, that, that the Lord sees, the only kind of language he hears, is what is good for the soul? What is, what opportunities do we have to show love? And if we're a, an onion farmer, or an astronaut, it makes no difference. It makes no difference at all in the sense that the Lord wants us to live a life of love and direct our lives towards heaven. It makes no difference if I know what's on the far side of our solar system or not. So the, the, the Lord's focus, the Lord's attention, the Lord's priorities aren't necessarily what, what, what humanities would be at all. He wants us to be happy, provided for shelter, of course, education, yes, free, uh, act, the freedom to, to practice our, our religion, of course, all of those things are important, absolutely. But what the Lord sees and what the Lord quantifies and what's, what's important to him is have I lived a life of love? So holding on to his promises enables us to do that because 
in, in adversity, in times of, of difficulty or challenge, to hold on to, Lord, you have said it and your word is true. You have said it and your word is true. So I believe that, that yes, uh, for example, you say in, in Isaiah, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Right, so Lord, you will keep my mind in peace if I trust in you. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Come to me, all you who are weary and overburdened, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. Come to me, all you who labor and overburdened, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. So the Lord wants to give you rest. That's always going to be good for your soul. That's not a prosperity gospel. Or that's the Lord will take care of you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. John 14, 27. Another promise of the Lord. I want to grant you peace. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your paths straight. The Lord will direct your paths. Think of of yourselves going home now for Christmas and the various challenges that some of you may have, you know, going out with friends and what to wear and how much to drink and where to go and who to go with and all those kind of uh, temptations, we'll say, that are out there. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and he will make your paths straight. Deuteronomy 31 6 says be strong and courageous do not be afraid or terrified because of them for the Lord your God goes with you he will never leave you nor forsake you divine promise blessed is she who believed the promise made her by the Lord would be fulfilled the Lord goes before you he will not forsake you are we blessed do we believe this do we believe this Matthew 28, 20, and, and lo, I am with you always, yes, to the very end of the age. I am with you always. Hebrews 13, 5, God says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Isaiah 41, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my right hand. In Psalm 91, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him, I will protect him, for he knows my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Again, this is, these are, are, are the words of the Lord. These are divine promises. So blessed are we if we believe them. Blessed are we if, if, if we take this as, as spiritual nourishment and apply it in my life with confidence, with confidence, with confidence. Lord, you've said you will be with me. Your word is true. You're with me. You're with me. You're with me right now. You're with me when I leave here. You are with me because you have said so. And we hold on to that promise. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. Psalm 91 again. Psalm 147, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. There are, there, are, there are many. We could actually go on for hours. I'm skipping a load here. There's so many. There's so many beautiful biblical promises. I just want to end with one. We've meditated this about a month ago, but it's Psalm 37. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you your heart's desire. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you your heart's desire. Blessed are we if we believe this. Blessed are we if we believe the word of God and not to see it as a part of the liturgy. It's more than that. It's your father trying to reach out to you, his beloved daughter, his beloved son. Trying to speak to you, trying to encourage you, trying to bandage your wounds, trying to lift you up, trying to give you the confidence to count on him. And as we head... Homer, as you head home, that is the greatest, 
Christmas gift you could get. To lean with confidence on the Lord. To know that you are blessed because you believe that his word is true. And because of that, you're never alone, you're never abandoned, you're never lost. You never need be ashamed. We've never fallen too far from his mercy. That we're infinitely loved, that our value is Jesus dying on the cross. And that if we delight in him, he will grant us our heart's desire. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, thank you so much for joining us uh, for these homilies on the internet, wherever you are watching us. Uh, it's a great honour and privilege that you would join us uh, on such a regular basis to share in our life here in Holy Family Mission. We're now eight years on the go, and we've had the privilege of welcoming over 90 young people to take part in our year-long faith formation programme. Uh, and all of that is possible due to your donations, your support, your help and your prayers. So we're greatly, greatly appreciative of all that has been done here, uh, also through your support and your efforts. Uh, this is our fundraising Christmas appeal time of the year as well. So if any of you can or would like to support us, uh, we would be delighted if you could do so. We, maybe I shouldn't be saying all of this, but we uh, uh, charge our young people €4,000 a year to be here. It costs in our around €10,000. We subsidise the price then by running retreats here and by fundraising. That's how, that's how we, we work. So uh, thank you so much for all <coughs> that you can do to further the mission of Holy Family Mission, that we can continue to renew, reinvigorate and revive the faith here in this country and indeed abroad. God bless you.